In this tutorial we are going to talk about the fasteners on concrete. It doesn't matter if we are talking about floors, walls or ceilings. And what I have brought you here is the most representative, it is what is commonly used in the professional world. This is what really guarantees us that we can always do a good installation. How do we know how much load each type of fixing resists? Well, it's very simple because it is always written on the labeling. There it tells us how much it resists to the tension. That is the amount of force required to remove the fixation by pulling down. But it is important to know one thing. This labeling also gives us another series of data that are fundamental, which we have to comply with to be sure that it covers these conditions. Here in the labeling you see data that are very important. Of course, the diameter of the hole I have to make or the depth I need to have to put the screw. This indicates the thickness of the material I can hold with it. When this thickness is not enough, I have to look for a bigger screw, this is the logic of application. In this case there are approvals that have this European seal. This means that they are certified seals that allow me to work in the most demanding installations. And this other data, also very important, this indicates the torque I have to exercise on the screw. If I tighten the screw more or less than required, the resistance varies. The torque is achieved by making the final tightening with a torque wrench. This is a wrench that has an indicator to set how far we want to go, so that it tells us when we have already reached the maximum pressure needed for the screw. Don't worry about the complexity that checking a super accurate torque is anyway. It doesn't matter if we have 2 newtons more or less of load. Actually, these are the indications we use for accredited facilities. Of course, we have to respect fundamental aspects such as diameter, depth of fixation, but, specific aspects, such as this torque, are for accredited facilities. However, as we are not working with the precision that is required in this type of installation, what we must do is always work with more margin, that is, we will never go to the limit of the load, because, as we are not sure that we have applied 100% of the conditions, it is better to be cautious. You know that this is the criterion we follow, because we think that these tutorials are not for professionals who work in large facilities, who already know them well, but basically, they are for professionals and more advanced dyers, to show them the things available when working. The first fixation we are going to see is this one, which is the simplest for medium loads. It is a polyamide anchorage with its corresponding screw. If we look at the labeling on the box, it tells that it is for loads of up to 202 kilos or 445 pounds. Logically, for this fastener to support 202 kilograms, I have to use not only the anchorage but also the screw inside of it. If we change the screw, we no longer know how much it resists. This is important because sometimes you can find technical data sheets where it specifies that the characteristic resistance or characteristic load of this type of fixing is n pounds generally many more dot and yet the recommended load is the one indicated on the box why because in theory laboratory tests say that it supports 800 kilos 1765 pounds however in practice the recommended load is generally reduced and this is one is the one given this is a logical simply because because the conditions in which the installations are made can sometimes be very unfavorable, and therefore the recommended load is reduced a lot. Making this type of installation is very simple. As you can see, this is the anchorage. What I am going to do is see the length of the anchorage to insert it with a drill and, of course, the diameter. To introduce the anchorage, we do it with the screw inside. We hit it with a hammer. As you can see, we have introduced a plate. Always the object that we want to fix has to be already placed at the time of making this hit and the adjustment of the anchor. You can screw the head with a socket wrench or a Torx bit wrench. The next anchorage that I am going to show you is for medium loads. It is a sleeve anchor. It is probably the most popular because it has a great quality price ratio, and because it has a lot of versatility because, in place of this screw, there are other types. Eye bolts, hook bolts, secure bolts. 
there is a lot of diversity, so it is very easy to find the one that will give you the function you need. The installation, as you can imagine, is the same. We have to make the corresponding drill and introduce the anchor with the help of a hammer. Logically, when introducing this fastener, we should already place the object that we are going to fix. In this case, to show you better how it works, we don't put any. And now we are going to tighten it with the torque wrench. As we tighten, the interior of the fastener expands. The maximum pressure we must use is precisely the one that the end of the torque will indicate with a click. This is what happens inside the concrete. When I turn the screw, I pull up on the cone and this opens the sleeve. The maximum force that I can exert is precisely the torque. This is when I have already achieved the maximum expansion, so that in that diameter, it is impossible for me to continue tightening. The next fastener we are going to talk about could be considered within the range of high loads. It supports more than 800 kilos, 1765 pounds, and, really, it is a type of fastener that I must confess has greatly surprised me, because I knew nothing about it. It's a direct screw for concrete. What advantages does it have over other fasteners? Well, the way it works is that I screw it in and with this threading, as if it was a usual screw, what it does is that it sets itself into the concrete. But what particular advantages does it have? Well, it does not expand like the anchors of the fasteners, like the ones I have shown you so far, but it directly adapts its shape to the concrete itself. This means that I can work with it in difficult places, because I am very close to the edge, or, for example, in stairway handrail installations, etc. Places where I have very little space and I risk breaking the concrete by using this type that doesn't expand, I don't have that danger. Or also when I have to put fasteners very close to each other. Let's see how the installation is done. We always make the drill using a drill bit diameter slightly inferior to that of the screw thread. To put the screw in, we will use an impact wrench, because the screw has to generate its own threading in the concrete to be fixed. We could also do it with a little more effort with the torque wrench or with a ratchet wrench. Next fixation I will show you. It is this fixation that supports up to 1,285 kg, 2,800 pounds. This is the favorite of elevator installers or other things like heavy-duty shelving in warehouses. When we have a lot of load commitment, we have to resort to fasteners like this. In this case it is a male fastener. We do the installation from the top with the nut. We introduce this fastener as the previous one with the hammer. In this case, it will ask us for more torque so, before tightening, we adjust the torque wrench to what the technical instructions tell us. So that you can understand what it is happening inside, this is a clamp that is going to expand as, by tightening, this cone goes up. Logically, when this is inserted into the pressure of the concrete, you have to use a lot of force with the key to be able to pull it up. Now that it is loose you can easily see the effect. As it goes down, the clamp opens it with the pressure of the cone. In this way, there comes a moment when the sum of the cone plus the clamp is so big that it is completely blocked. And, of course, we have already seen this in another tutorial. A reliable solution to make a solid and resistant fastener in concrete is to use chemical plugs with the rods that correspond to the installation we need.
This direct screw has grabbed our attention during the tests because this is a classic problem when we try to use all the available space because we have to put some piece in concrete with the traditional fastener, we always end up cracking it. In fact, we have made a specific test. In a piece of curb, we have made the drill and we have put the screw. We see that it fits perfectly and holds without any problem. Another feature that is very interesting of course is that, as it is a screw, just as I put it in, I can remove it, so it is much easier to dismantle it than any other system where I have to cut the head with a radial. In the same curve, if we try to put a traditional fastener, We realize that, when we are tightening, before reaching the torque required by the standard to be able to have an acceptable fixation, we can see how it starts to crack due to the expansion pressure, and we are break the curb. In fact, what we like the most about making these tutorials is to discover new products or new ways of application that we did not know well and to tell you about them. Everything we learn, especially with technical departments, with experts, we practice and tell you, which is our mission. It is so important for us to know new things that we also want to know your opinion about what we are doing in this series about screws. This feedback is really useful, it gives us an idea of what things are interesting, what do you want us to continue doing and where to go next. And any suggestions in the comments section will be greatly appreciated. We are looking forward to reading your comments. And now what we hope to have earned your like, that you subscribe to the channel, if you are not already, and that you remember to click the bell to receive our notifications and, of course, that you share this video with all your friends who like D.